renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise and the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at Exile Community Church, where serving and giving begins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. There is no God like you, Lord. There is no God like you, Lord. Lord, we're going to give you all the glory and all the honor, all the praise, Father. For you are worthy. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Esau. We're going to praise God today. You praise him in your own way, and I'm going to praise him in my way. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Come on. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord 
rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We're going to take that again. It's hallelujah. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. somebody let it rise. Let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Let it rise. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Somebody let it rise. Let it rise. Hey. Let the shout of the Lord, let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Lord, let it rise, yeah. Hallelujah. Let the shout of the Lord rise among us. Let the shout of the Lord Rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise, hallelujah, let it rise, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on and sing it, let it rise. Oh, come on, give him glory. He's a, hallelujah, he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're a mighty God. There's nobody like you, Lord. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to your name. So, you know, the Lord is my life. And he's my salvation. I shall fear no man. I shall fear no circumstance. 
because God is the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Oh, I give you glory, Lord. I give you honor, Lord. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Hallelujah. I will wait on you, you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on and sing it. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Hallelujah. I will wait on you. I will trust in you till I die. I will trust in you. I will remain, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Now, if you believe this, we're going to make a declaration unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hope on the one who is the everlasting God.
goodness of the Lord. You know, saints, I'm going to trust him. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His word will not come back void. Hallelujah. So you know what? I will trust. Hallelujah. In the Lord. You know, his promises are true. I, I will trust. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on trusting in the Lord. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But you know what? I'm going to trust. Hallelujah. In the Lord. Until I I'm going to keep on trusting in the Lord. I, I will trust in the Lord until I, till I, till I die. And I'm going to stay on.
Amen, amen, amen. We just keep on praising God right there. If you're going to stay on the battlefield, we ought to go and give him some praise in this house. If you're going to continue to trust him, you go on and praise him in this house. For those watching online, you think back how God has kept you through some things. We're going to stay on the battlefield because we know the Lord is on our side. Because we know if it had not been for the Lord, we would not be here today. Folks, you say no harm in moaning sometimes. When you can't think of the words, sometimes you just have to moan it to God. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. He has been just that good. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody couldn't make it to the house tonight. But God saw fit to let you come into the temple one more time. And I'm going to give him my best praise. Because tomorrow is not promised to me. The next day is not promised to me. So I'm going to praise him while I can right now. Because he's been just that good. Have your way, Lord. Lord, have your way in this place tonight. Amen. 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 Come on, keep on praising him. We're going to keep on praising him. Keep on praising him. Sometimes you got to just praise your way through it. You, we don't know what you came here on your shoulders tonight. But just praise your way through it. Because you know Lord God is going to take that load from you. Amen. 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 Come on. Lord, let's give it up one more time for the praise and worship leader. For ushering us into this sanctuary of worship this evening. Lord, we thank for these musicians. We thank you for everyone who is joining with us online and in this tabernacle this evening. Lord, have mercy. We're going to do our best to get through this. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'd like to bless and give honor to the shepherd of this house, Pastor Johnson and First Lady Johnson. I always thank them for extending the invitation for letting me come to stand and preach God's word. God is so good, y'all. God is so good, y'all. I can't tell it all of what he's done for me. But I, my soul says hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Listen, I'm not going to prolong the time. I'm going to keep on going with the Spirit and lead us because God has sent me here with a word on this evening. Amen, amen. I would like for you to join me in Psalm 37. And we're going to read just one verse, but keep your Bibles open because we're going to come back to look at it some more of that chapter. Amen, amen. I would like to also thank my mom for who's here with me this evening. She's my, my traveling support, as I call her. Amen, amen, amen. Psalm chapter 37, verse 7. And I'll be reading from the NIV version 
just for context purposes. So be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Amen. May it be a blessing to the hearers and doers of God's word. Amen. If I could talk briefly from a subject, I want to talk from the blessings of waiting. The blessings of waiting. My brothers and sisters, there are extraordinary stories all throughout the Bible. Recorded about all of these great men of God who were characterized by their faith. But what is it that enabled them to make a difference is their obedience to the word of God. The apostle Paul says, consequently, faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of God. When a person begins their journey, this spiritual walk, and they start off reading scripture and getting into their word, there is a level of faith that's activated when you become contacted with the word of God. All throughout the Bible, these men of God learned to hear the Lord's voice. They believed in his word. They didn't question it. They didn't try to redefine it. They simply obeyed exactly what God has spoken. Through their great conquest, they were took to places that some of them didn't even want to be in. The fact of the matter is, they went against circumstances that they could not bear sometimes. But all throughout that, they had to learn how to trust in him and rest in the promises of God. See, when it comes to faith, it's all about trust, hope, and waiting on God. This has to be deeply rooted inside of you, in the heart of every believer. Because all throughout the Bible, time and time again, you will find the word trust, hope, and wait on God. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned in this walk is to wait on God. It is not the easiest thing to do sometimes because we sometimes want our will to be done instead of God's will to be done. And though it's easier said than done, it's easy to look at somebody and say, well, you just let God's will be done in your circumstance. But if you never walked in the shoes of a person that's faced with a giant in their life, if you never had your back up against the wall where it seemed like when it rains, it pours down on you sometime, then you don't know what it feels like to be stuck in God's waiting room while trusting him. But there are blessings of being in God's waiting room. Because, see, I, I tell people all the time, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans for your life. Because, see, we all want to write out of how our life should be. We all visualize how things should have happened. We all have stories of what, if, what things could have been. But, uh, but have you just thought, sat down and thought sometimes, Lord, why did you choose me? to endure the things that I had to endure. But I, I've learned that sometimes, because I used to ask this question, but then God would come back to me in my spirit and say, but why not you? Why not choose you? Because the more you go through things, the stronger your faith becomes. Amen. The stronger your faith becomes, the more you trust in him. Amen. The more you trust in him, you begin to lean on nothing else but him. In this life, you have to learn that it's not easy just to depend on God. It's not easy just to live his word. It's got to be some action behind it. And the lessons that God teaches us sometimes, let me tell you, we're not ready for them. The lesson that God has brought you through and shown you in your life, in the end, you may have realized I'm stronger than what I thought I was. I'm more, I'm, I'm more capable than what I thought I was. Because the Bible tells us when we are weak, 
he makes us strong. See, it all boils down to why you're waiting. The blessing of it is, is that God is trying to draw you nearer to him. Oh, and if we could get a lot more people today that want to draw nearer to God and not separate from God. Because see, the closer you get to him, the more the enemy is going to come at you. A pastor told me a long time ago, he said, listen, when you feel like the enemy is ramping up his attacks against you, it's because he know God got something great for you on the other end. Sometimes the blessings that God has for us, the enemy don't want us to get there. And because the enemy don't want us to get there, he will throw every distraction you can think of to keep you from the will of God. God's, God's timing has always been precise. He's never too late, and he's never ahead of schedule. Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we lose patience. Sometimes we take the wrong steps. And then sometimes we make the choice to just throw it all away. Look at Saul. Saul didn't want to wait for the appointed time that Samuel had told him. Saul told him, Samuel told him that he had to go for an encounter. But because Samuel was late returning back to Saul, Saul decided, I'm going to go seek the answers from God on my own. But he broke the law because he went against a principle in the Old Testament time that when you, and he went and offered a sacrifice, which he shouldn't have done. Because this is something that only a priest could do. After offering the sacrifice, Samuel arrived and rebuked Saul for his impatience. And as a result, Saul lost everything. He said, you act foolishly. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. He said, if you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel. He said, but now your kingdom will not endure. All because he wanted to do things on his own. He wanted to have control of the situation. He wanted to dictate the outcome. You will learn that in God's waiting room, in order to draw nearer to him, in order to learn how to trust and lean on his word, you got to surrender everything. You have to say, Lord, I surrender all. All control, all emotions, all feeling. Lord, I surrender all. And it's not easy for us to give up control. It's not easy for us to want to just do what God said do. Because, I listen, I know you have people either on your job, people you know as friends, it don't matter if, if you're in a group sometimes and you say, listen, we, we need to make a decision where we want to go eat. Everybody in the group may be on the same accord except for one person. Every place you name, they got a problem with it. I don't like that. I don't eat that. I had a bad experience there. But then, you know, you get frustrated because you tell them, well, listen, you keep saying no to everything, but you're not making no recommendations. You're not suggesting nothing. What is your purpose for being in this setting? The enemy will send you somebody who's just full of no's just to disrupt what God got for your plan. You got to know how to have, ask God for discernment. It's to say, show me the people in this season who are for me. Show, show me the ones in this season, God, who I need to keep my company with. Show me the ones in this season, God, who I need to remove from my presence. Because, see, listen, you are what you feed yourself. You, you are what you feed yourself. If all you feed yourself is negativity and drama, that is what you love. That is what you're going to spew out. That's why I tell people, listen, growth and change are two different things. People are always talking about change. Change happens over time. But sometimes change can happen instant. 
But growth, it takes a long time for some growth, for you start seeing the growth. You know, you have those friends that now that you've decided that you want better for yourself, they look at you and say, oh, you changed. You different now. You think you better than us. I look at them and tell them, I'm not better than you. I'm just growing. Because when you're growing in God, you're going to learn some stuff about yourself and others that don't benefit you. God's waiting room can be a slow process sometimes. But the best thing about his waiting room is that all he's getting, you, getting ready to do is bless you more and more. You to trust him is to know him. And, and we make it so complicated sometimes. We try to make all of this so complicated. If you just study your word, confess and believe, to know him is to trust him. God has brought us through too much stuff for us to keep on doubting what God can do. You, it's so many people with great testimonies about what they have endured, what they have been through, what they have saw, and others have not made it where you are. But yet, when you get to a situation sometimes, you begin to doubt. Why? He's the same God he was yesterday, today, and he's going to be the same God forevermore. He's the same God that kept you when you didn't have nothing. So he's the same God that's going to keep you now you got a little something. He's the same God that was there when you were sick. He's the same God that's right there with you now while you're feeling a little better. He's the same God when you was broke, he was still right there providing for you. Whether you call on him or not, he loves us just that much that he's still going to keep on providing for us. God's waiting room is necessary because it draws us closer to him. You ever took a moment and said, Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to thee. Because there's no way you're going to get closer to God and remain the person that you are. There's no way you're going to get closer in his presence and remain who you was. God's mission, God's whole, th whole is this everything is about evolving and transformation. But it all takes time. We got to learn to know how to wait on him. You got to know that when God placed you in his waiting room, he's, be he's beginning a good work in me. When you tell yourself, God is beginning a good work in me, then you identify that there's some stuff I need to clean up. God's beginning a good work in me. I don't always talk like he want me to talk. I don't always say the right things. I don't always think the right things. That's why you have to take time sometimes and say, Lord, renew my mind. Create in me a clean heart. Renew, remove whatever it is that's not pleasing in your sight. Remove these things out of me so that I can be a better vessel to serve you. All God wants us to do is love each other. He made it so simple in his word. All he wants you to do is love each other. But we're so full of hate that God is so tired of us. All we do is talk about each other. Look down on one another. When will we begin to change? Because whether you know it or not, we all sitting in God's waiting room. The time is now. You, growing up as children, we thought, looking at our elders, that we will reach that age one day. They leave it here before they even crack 30. 
it's a blessing this day and age if you make it to 50. We have to appreciate and thank God constantly for the many blessings that he gives us each and every day. His grace, his mercy, his favor, his love, all of that that he shows us each and every day. We dare not take it for granted. He loves us just that much. The blessing of being in his waiting room is ultimately a making yourself available. Say, Lord, empty me. You know, Lord, empty me. So that you may fill me with the right spirit in me. Lord, empty me so that I may live the life that you want me to live. Lord, empty me so that I am able to do the things that you have called for me to do. Lord, empty me while I wait on you. While I wait on you. Lord, I tell God every day, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on God because I know the longer I wait, he is doing a good work in me. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. She dealt with the issue for 12 long years. The Bible tells us she saw physician after physician after physician. Spent all of her fortunes because they made promises to her that they knew they couldn't keep. They told her how many times, I can cure you. I can heal you. I can fix you up. For 12 years, she went going. But one day, she knew that a man named Jesus was coming through the town. And what I love about it is, because she had enough faith to get to him, she said, he don't have to put hands on me. He don't have to prophesize over me. I just want to touch the him of his garment how does a woman who's been denied 12 years have enough faith to know that if I can just get to his presence and touch the hem of his garment that is where my healing is because she heard all the miracles that he was doing already she had enough faith because she knew who Jesus was we all know who Jesus is we all know who we can call on in the time of trouble we all know who has been there for us when we were against the wall. But do you have the faith to wait on him? Wait on God. Wait on God. She knew. Because in her waiting, I'm pretty sure in her waiting in time, she sat there and said, I'm tired of keep going to these doctors. I'm tired of every dough that I, every time I get a, a little slight moment of hope, somebody come and snatch it away. I'm tired of dealing with every time I go to a physician, he's telling me, I can help you. She's scrambling to get all her fortunes together. And then to find out they can't do nothing for her. Left her, she came in and left out in a worse shape than what she was in. That is how some of us operate. We go in and we go because we don't want to wait on God. We go and jump on the first quick thing we see and we give everything to him. And then we leave out and realize that if I just had waited yeah. on God, he would have gave me everything I needed and more. He would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. According to his power. Listen, words have power. And what I've learned, listen, let me tell you, I'm just 33, but what I learned, things you said when you were little hit a little different now. We used to just read the scripture in Sunday school. You know, they tell you, now read this quote back after me. Jesus loved me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. 
But when you face through some stuff, when you going through some situations and you know nobody else could bring you out but Jesus, then it becomes a little different for you. Then you really say, Jesus loves me. This I know. For his Bible tells me so. That he's watching over me. That he walks with me. That he talks with me. He's always there by my side. He said in his word in Isaiah, as Isaiah, when you go into the fire, I shall not let it set you ablaze. He said, when you go into the waters, I will not let it drown you. Which means he can make every crooked road straight. And he can put an overflow in every desert in your life. God can do abundantly, exceedingly, everything you ask or think. That's just how great he is. If we just wait on him. So if I'll leave you with anything else. Learn to wait on God. When it seems like it's getting rough. Just learn to wait on God. When it seems like nothing else would do. Just learn to wait on God. When it seems like your back is against the wall. Just learn to wait on God. His promises say he shall keep you in perfect peace. He said he shall never leave you nor forsake you. So many people have walked out on you in your life, but God was right there by your side. So many people have lied to your face, but God was right there by your side. Many people have told you no sometimes and didn't keep the promises that they made, but God was right there by your side in that same chapter 37 David said if you go down to 39 and 40 he said the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord he is the stronghold in the time of trouble the Lord helps them and delivers them he delivers them from wicked and saved them because they take refuge in him. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear and whom shall I be afraid? There is nothing on the earth, nothing under the earth that can separate you from the love of God. All you got to do is wait on him and keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on hoping. Keep on talking. Keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on singing. Keep on praising him. Keep on glorifying. Keep on calling on him. Because the more I call on him, the better I feel. The more I call on him, the better I feel. Because God has not failed me yet. He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. He is worthy to be praised. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep on saying, Lord, I don't mind waiting. Lord, I don't mind waiting on you because I know God is going to see me through. Whoever is at the brink of your breaking point. I just want you to know, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Because he has never and will never give up on you. Don't count God out. There are blessings in waiting on the Lord. And the blessing is that despite what the circumstances look like, despite what the enemy throws at me, despite what the enemy try to do to me, I'm always stand tall because I'm just like David. David said, the Lord is with me always. He told him I took down a lion and a bear because the Lord was with me always. When he went to face Goliath, he, they looked at him and laughed at him. Said, what you think you're going to do against this giant? 
David, you're not strong enough. You're not no warrior. You don't have no armor. David said, listen, you don't know what I've been through. You wasn't there when the lion and the bear was out there when I was tending to the sheep. David said, I'm going to face this Goliath and take him down because God is with me. Wait on God and watch him start turning your situations around. That's just the God that we serve. Come on, let's bless the Lord all over this house. That's my message. Oh, come on, bless the Lord in this house. Come on, bless the Lord in this house. If you are grateful and thankful that we serve a God, a mighty God that we can wait on, who will always be there with us, no matter what we face up against, God will be right there by our side. Because as we sit here right now, and as you're watching at home, God is already working on your behalf. He is already turning that situation around. We're going to speak life into that thing. We shall not speak. We're going to speak life. We're going to breathe some new breath into this. Because God is with us. And he will always be with us. Oh, come on, bless the name. Come on, bless the name. Amen, amen. Amen. As we keep with that, we're going to move in this fashion as we open the doors and open the invitation to discipleship. Whether you're in here or at the home, the ultimate goal is that souls be saved. At the end of the day, you don't need no music. You don't need no instruments. You don't need no microphone. You don't even need a pulpit to tell somebody about Jesus the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the son of God that he came and died for our sins but yet rose again then you too shall be saved so wherever you are whether you're watching or in here and you don't have a personal relationship with him we can make him your personal savior here today. Jesus is the best thing. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Because at the end of the day, Jesus is all we got. He's kept us. He's brought us. He's blessed us. He's loved us. He's washed over us. He's held us. He's comforted us. He wiped away our tears. He picked up our heavy burdens. Jesus has been there with us always. So we extend that invitation to you. But also we want to just make sure that no one leaves here without submitting your unspoken prayers your unspoken requests. Everything don't always have to be said out loud. So what I'm asking while we get ready to go in prayer to the Lord, whatever it is that you've been dealing with, whatever it is you've been carrying, or if you want to stand in the gap for somebody, just speak their name. Just speak whatever it is right now to God. As we look to him right now, because God still is in the miracle working business God still is a healer God still is a provider for those of you watching us online just type it in the chat so we as a community of believers on one accord can pray to God on everybody's behalf let us pray Father God, we thank you right now just for being who you are. For God, you've been so good to us. And Lord, we just wanted to first say thank you. Lord, I thank you for this word you have given into this empty vessel right today. 
Lord, we thank you for your atmosphere and your Holy Spirit being in this place today. Lord, because we come to give you the praise that you deserve. But God, we also come to lay out some things that we have been carrying throughout this week. And so, Lord, we come now with unspoken requests. We come now with burdens to lay at your hands and at your feet. For God, we're standing in a gap for somebody who could not speak their own problems right now, Father God. Lord, we ask that you touch everybody here and everybody watching us, Father God. That you touch every household represented here, Father God. Whatever is ailing these bodies, Father God, we take that you take your finger of healing power and wrap it and touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody came in with some financial burdens right now, Father God. Lord, send that blessing. Open up your windows of heaven and pour out so many blessings that they don't have room to receive. Because God, we love you this evening. Because you are a mighty God. You are an awesome God. You are a worthy God. And for that, God, we just want to say thank you, God. As the tears roll down my face, Father God, I just want to tell you thank you, Lord. Because if it had not been for you, Father God, who was on my side, I, I would not be here right now. But I thank you on this evening because you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. And God, we will continue to lift your name on high. Father, we need you more than ever before. And we will give you all the glory. We will give you all the honor and the praise. In the masterless of Jesus' name, we say, amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Blessed also. Now, as we get ready to close, we, aren't, we do not want to forget that we can share all in the same thing of giving our gifts to the Lord. Amen. For those that are watching at home, that I believe Asaph have online giving. Amen. Giving gifts glory to God. You can go to asaphcc.org to put in your givings. And listen, you, God loves a cheerful giver. And the only way ministry continues to grow and keep forward is we have to sow back just a portion of what he has blessed us with. So for those that are in here, I believe you have white envelopes that you can put your offering and your gifts in. And we have these two baskets right up in the front that you may be able to bring those to. And we just thank you and love you on this evening. And so we're going to bless the offering and then we're going to lead right into our benediction so we be getting ready to dismiss from here. But I want to just tell you thank you. I just want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart for receiving this in this broken vessel. And I thank God for the shepherd of this house, the lady of this house, each and every one of you who are here and who's sharing with us online. Because let me tell y'all something. God is still working it out. All things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Now, we wanna, we're going to bless this offering. So if you have it over here, you want to just hold your envelope up or whatnot, we're going to bless this offering. And then we're going to go right into the benediction. Amen. Father God, we come to you right now just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we come right now to bring you gifts. And we ask that you bless these gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, bless those that gave. Bless those that had the desire to give but just didn't have it, Father God. For those that are giving online, continue to bless them. And that they come back to them and they shall reap in the mother and fold. So we thank you and we bless you. Now, Father, now by the grace of our once crucified and risen Savior, henceforth and forevermore, Lord, keep us as we depart from this place, but we do not leave your presence. Watch over us and we have have traveling grace and let every heart in this building say amen amen amen, amen. amen.